Well, you were trying to say to me that I should, you were waiting for me to read this, right? Is that I, what you wanted I me was to do? Waiting, I was waiting for my papers to be distributed, yes ma'am. Well, it's a little bit long. If you wait us to, uh, if you want us to read this, then you would have to sit down and then we can ask you to speak later because there's no way that we can read all these pages while you come to the microphone. So you, it's your wish, Mr. Beto. I, I would like to speak that. Okay, look that's that for fine. reference since you've already signed the contract. Yes, we did. Yes. Well played. Good afternoon, sir. Well played, sir. Uh, Sean Baytal, Ferguson, Senior High Chemistry. Um, I would like to change my speech, having witnessed that done deal move that you guys just did, um, to see you in court. That's not on the script. But because there are people watching who wouldn't know what I'm referring to, I'll try to read through what I can. One other thing, though, uh, to the president of UTD, speaking of misinformation, 49% of funding comes from the local millage, 49%. That's under your control, or at least a good portion of it is. The other thing is democracy, Mr. President of UTD, doesn't, true democracy doesn't involve deleting comments from one's Facebook page because they're not in alignment with your opinion. I'm asking you to send this contract back. It's a little late because number one, it includes a salary schedule that violates statutory deadline of July 1st, 2014 and the intent of grandfathered. It is vague and nonspecific in terms of its mode for advancement for those that are professional service contract teachers and it further impoverish, impoverishes your employees as described by the National Council for Teacher Quality Study released in December. Please send it back. The attachments in the many pages that I've given you include a sheet covering the typos and omissions pertaining to the advancement, uh, the NCTQ study or a reference to it that shows how Miami participates in impoverishing its teachers, and letters from your HR department that are written to the thousands of teachers each year who ask for documentation so they can apply for welfare. This is your legacy if you let this kind of salary schedule continue to be promoted. Florida Statute 1012.221 says the grandfathered salary schedule, listen carefully please slowly, means the salary schedule adopted, this is the legislature, adopted by the school board before July 1st, 2014. That schedule was the schedule in effect adopted October 14, 2013. Uh, the Department of Education, nor my legal uh, plan, Professional Educators Network of Florida, neither one could come up with a single precedent to show how you can change a grandfathered policy that is described in Florida statutes. Nine, nine different times grandfather is used in Florida statutes. You cannot find a precedent for changing something like a, a salary schedule that's already in place. You're impoverishing your teachers with the kind of salary schedules that you're promoting. Um, you've got the letters from your HR department. I'm gonna wrap it up now because the red light's flashing, but I am gonna just read my little conclusion. But I have not stopped you, sir. Okay. Well, then I'll say this. Your, your employees are already down four steps. They're owed to us. This salary schedule that's in this, what, what we believe is a illegal change to the grandfathered salary schedule, uh, it does not have any mechanism for returning those four steps or any further advancement. There's a reference to how advancement will occur, but you can't find that reference. I gave you a copy of that. There, it's posted in there. If you look for the reference that's identified, it's not there. The only thing that is there is the description of how new hires will be credited for different kinds of service. So we, the, the real fear among we PSC teachers, the majority of your teachers, the real fear is that there is nothing in writing, there is no specification of how we will be advanced if you throw out the step schedule that almost every other county, every other district in Florida has already complied with the law by submitting alongside their performance salary schedule. Um, so in closing, I'm going to ask you to send this back and demand that your negotiators put something in writing to allay our fears, to show us how we're going to be uh, respected, show us how we're going to be rewarded, show us how we're going to be compensated for the hard work that we have done that has brought you the accolades. 
Um, look at those letters from your HR department to your thousands of teachers who every, and, and your support staff who are on welfare, who every year, are you, are you comfortable knowing that you have voted for a salary schedule that sends your employees to the welfare office to apply for food stamps? The four letters that you have every year, our HR department sends that letter out and tells them, don't, don't ask us for verification until you've really checked to see if you're that poor. That's essentially what it says. And then it says to the support staff, oh, by the way, you are that poor, so we'll send you the document, don't ask you for it. Are you really happy? Are you really satisfied to sit on that legacy to know that you're driving people to the welfare office who work for you? from the support staff to the teachers with masters and doctorates who are delivering the world-class education that brings you the accolades, the trips to New York, the Broad Awards. I'm asking you not to let this legacy be yours. Thank you, Dr. Mr. Chabito. Thank back. you very Thank much. Thank you very much for your understanding and your Thank you very much, sir. M Madam Chair, if I may. Dr. 